tonight really is the beginning. This is night number one. love about this exhibition is its complexity. It's so multi-layered. It kind of shows how complex a human being is. You know, you have joy, you have sadness, you have fun, you have seriousness, but all of it is meaningful. I don't think there's even a word that can describe what the experience is here today. And as I walk through each exhibit, each exhibit has its own unique experience, its own unique message, and each one of them just takes my breath away. I think that it's, it's an extremely powerful uh, exhibit. You know, we were just talking about how powerful the exhibit is from uh, you know, the, the images from South Africa, the experience of, of people in India uh, speaks to kind of the devastation that's happened across the globe. You know, it's very moving. I think the key to making the work more accessible to the public is the fact that this particular exhibition doesn't just focus on visual art or, or just on video or just on installation. You've got a little bit of everything going on in there, including text works that can appeal to just about anybody. There's something for each type of person. It's very creative in terms of how we create awareness in the community. It gave me an opportunity to look at how HUB is looked at, not only through here in, in America, but also across the world. The thing I actually find the most startling or the, or the most moving is the, the sign the AIDS crisis is still beginning. And it is the idea of every day it's like snowballing and beginning. And, and that's like just really kind of made me stop and pause. I think what I like about it is that there's um, there's art representing so many different aspects of the AIDS crisis and so many different parts of the world and different points in time of the epidemic and to see all of those at once is pretty powerful. We've been saving our bottles for 15 years and we figured putting them in the shape of a figure is a good representation of us and surrounding it with hypodermic needles that we use for different kinds of medicine uh, was another part of it, and it all came together pretty well. I don't think there's anything more satisfying for any artist than when somebody sees something and they get it. And they're, well, they're moved by it for whatever yeah, reason. For whatever reason they get it. They, it you know, there may be a completely different level than we intended, or we had, you know, just they get it, and it's, it's moving them. What more can you ask for? I think when people want to stay in the space, you know, for long periods of time, which they did tonight, when they don't want to leave the museum, I think that says wonderful things about what the exhibit says. You know, there's this wonderful buzz in the air, and people are, are leaving, sort of talking about that, and they're, they're telling us they want to come back, they want to come back to an exhibit about AIDS. I think to the lot about the work that we're trying to do. The way information is transmitted is not like the morning paper in this really organized way. I don't think most people actually kind of operate that way in day-to-day -day life. They operate sort of based on emotion more, based on sort of experience more. So actually, I think the method of communication is really relevant. It kind of makes a lot more sense. Uh, the work here is diverse. The audience here is diverse. You've got AIDS activists here. You've got academics here. You've got policymakers here. That's the kind of thing we need to do out in the public is get these kind of groups together to say it impacts us all. I've, I've used um, female condoms to basically to draw attention to them because I feel that uh, women should have more power and have more choice about how to protect themselves. My work will hopefully have some benefit in, in helping to save people's lives or even if they're infected make them you know more conscious if they use condoms that it will stop reinfection. I'll tell you what would be really pleasing to me is if everybody who comes here does something. Like it's not just an art opening, it's not just an art event, but it becomes, you know, a reason, a, a, it propels, it encourages, it stimulates, it humiliates or shames some people into doing something. Now that would be something to celebrate. I can say that we've been really conscious about who's represented, and we've also felt the, the kind of the limits of full representation because there are so many kinds of people in the world who are affected. We could, in a knee-jerk fashion, address almost any representation issue that was brought to us. I'm more inclined to say, 
let's keep making more. You know, let's make new versions of the exhibition. Let's upload artwork onto the website. Let's keep finding ways to bring the necessary stories that need to be told into the exhibition project. Those of us involved in this project firmly believe that artists can activate us into transformational thinking, feeling, and doing. Our goal is to foster an appreciation and understanding of and respect for difference and diversity. At the same time, we emphasize the powerful roles that art plays and the ways art intervenes in people's lives. It's not just one thing. You know, it's not just about grief, but it's also about empowerment and about still living life and surviving and thriving. We are connected and we are linked by humanity. And if we have to fight against something that is uh, against humanity as this kind of epidemic, we have first of all to understand it. We can make art to understand AIDS, but we can make art also to stop it.